All right, brothers, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? We about to do another one with this Ebony K. So, Ebony K. I'm. It matter of fact, the title basically is Ebony K versus the modern day woman. So, I just what if y'all don't already know, Ebony K is 40 years old, and she's just starting to realize that you know she is um she's she's hit the she's hit the wall. She's literally hit the wall. All right. So, brothers, I know a lot of y'all have been on certain panels and y'all have talked to other women and they don't want to really listen to what y'all have to say. So it's kind of sad that even another so-called black woman, an older black woman is talking to a younger black woman because some of the stuff that she did, she tried to educate her and she doesn't want to listen. But before I do that, brothers, I want y'all to listen to her. This was about, this was during COVID. And I want you, she had a potential, she had a fiance. And I want you to listen to why she broke up with her fiance. All right, so let's get to it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela E. Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we were talking about something Ebony K. Williams said with Wendy Williams. Let's take a listen. You know what? This quarantine, I think, like a lot of couples, Wendy, it made us tell the truth about our relationship. How long were you with him before quarantine? Almost four years. Did you live with him at the time of quarantine? I'll tell you what happened. He actually did not quarantine with me. He's He has three children, two of which are young adults, and he chose to quarantine in New Jersey with his semi-adult children. And for me, listen, I'm not a parent yet, so I'm not, I get that they're number one. Right. But I need to be number one, Wendy. So we're asking 800. Now, does that sound like selfishness? She said that he, she understands that his children are number one but she needs to be number one. Dating a man with children. So she needs to be put in front of his children. Now, if she had a child, do you think that she would be feeling the same way? Do you think that she would actually put a man over her, ch over her children, especially if it's not his children? So I really don't want to go through this whole thing because... Um, you know, DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne all give their little perspective on things. So I'm not really going to go through all that. So that was in 2000. When did when did COVID start? Between 2000, it started in 2019, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward to now. We we we're going to fast forward to her going back on the show in 2023, and we're going to see what's really going on. So hold on one second, brothers. So, brother, she did, she did, Ebony K. Williams did this show three days ago, um, and now she's, she's 40, and now she is going to talk to a younger woman about the things that she should be doing, because Ebony K. Williams made a lot of mistakes. I want you, brother, to keep in mind, she was, she was married, and she put her career first, and because she wanted to put her career first, she divorced her husband. Y'all, recent, recently, just, you just heard where she broke up with a guy that she dated for four years because he was quarantined with his children. And she felt that she should be number one, even though those are his kids. So that's selfish again. The woman is selfish. So now let's get to that. Now let's fast forward to 2023, brothers, and let's listen to what she has to say to a younger 31 year old black woman because they were upset at what uh, Ebony K. Williams she was upset at what Ebony K. Williams said and she let her feelings get old, get ahead of her you know she could have used logic when she was speaking but when, when she heard Ebony K. Williams but she didn't and she's going to put that out there too this is, most, this is how most women act so let's get to it it's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have Lauren LaRosa here, our special guest host, and we got a special guest with us today. We had a topic talking about some statements that she said, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Ebony you know, K. Williams. You know, don't nobody stir it up like Ebony K. <laughs> What's up, Envy? What's up, Char? Good What's up, Miss Lauren? Hi, Good how are you? Good morning. Good morning. And brothers, let me let me say this. Cause she's not the only one, but Ebony K. Williams uses a lot of talking points that Kevin Samuels used to use. 
So a lot of these older women are starting to get it because they know that their value when it comes to marriage is low. Nobody wants to marry. You got older men that are dating that want to date younger women because their fertility. And she's going to point that out. So let's get to it. Hey, uh, Envy, I was going to be very, very pissed and disappointed if you weren't Skyping in. So good why? Speak. Well, because I didn't know if I'd ever be back up here to be candid. If you don't after Skype? the last, no, I really. Why? You know, it was, it was, it was tight last you think time. So? Yeah, but God is good. I came with my godly on. You don't think so? Godly on. We good. It's really, God is good. I would say this, you know, every time we have a conversation, we're always not going to agree, but you're always invited up here regardless. I mean, we're not going to agree on everything, but the, the, the best thing about us is just having a conversation. So never think that you can't come up here for something you say. No, that's what these conversations and these platforms are about. I, I'm half playing, but but it's a good point and it's, it's worth saying out loud. So I appreciate that. And I love so you, love. sister. I don't, I, I don't want you to think I don't love you. I love you for real. It's, like, it's it's I appreciate family. everything that you do. Absolutely. And it's just like anything else. You go hard to send the paint with your fam. So, mm -hmm. well, absolutely. Yes, in the paint, as in the paint that's on your face. Envy. Oh Shut up, Charlotte. Well, I'm happy you're here. Thank you, I Lord. I said yesterday I would love to have a conversation with you about the video. Yo, what is going on with this sister's hair? Y'all see that? Like, what is going on right here? I, I know I'm a hater anyway, so I don't really care. But <laughs> what the hell is this? Let's continue. Yeah. Now, yes. what's, what's the topic of conversation? I feel like this is a conversation that men shouldn't even be involved in. But what, I agree. Is, what is the gist of the conversation? It's not for you, Charlamagne. So I'm glad that you said that. Um, this is a conversation for ladies. And I texted uh, my good friend Charlamagne. I said, it's a friend of the show. I, I heard the conversation yesterday. I appreciated the critique and the constructive nature of it. And I said, you know, since I'm down the street on the train, let me pull up. And, and I want to hear from you, Lauren, about what you agree with and what you disagree with and have a, a ladies conversation about let's it let's do it yeah so i think for me um i'll start with what the what i disagree with let's well, well can first for people that, that don't oh, know you want to okay. you want to play the clip of, of what went viral yeah, so, so people that. understand that the reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year no matter how good we look no matter how fit we are men are still seeing primarily our presumed dwindling fertility as a knock against us so here's my advice if you are a young black woman in college and you know in your heart and in your head that you want to prioritize family i suggest that you simultaneously pursue that mrs degree right along with that ba or jd because a handful of black college age men that actually do desire to get married soon and they do share that value system and family is a priority for them too y'all that is an incredibly small pool and it's shrinking as you get older and by the time you reach my age 40 you will be faced with different choices relating to life partnership and motherhood so so brothers i hope y'all heard that and a lot of I'm going to just keep it 100. A lot of the colored women, a.k.a. black women of America, were very upset at what she said. If y'all if y'all just happen to find the clip and y'all go to the comment section, a lot of black American women were upset at the truth. It wasn't a lie. It was the truth. And this young lady here is 31 years old. So let's let's go ahead and continue. I think. Um, all right. So breaking it down into what I agree and what I disagree with. So the disagreeing for me came with the starting with the infertility and the uh, the market value they're appreciating. So with the infertility, I know some. I said this yesterday. So some stuff is science, right? You can't get around that. But I feel like when you start with that and you lead with that, it then makes people get defensive and they don't even hear the rest of it. I know when I. Of course because the truth hurts so of course they're gonna get defensive women are going to get defensive at the truth and they hate the truth so she's going to tell you that she didn't really listen to anything else first listen to it i was like oh god this is going to be another one of those conversations where like someone's telling me as a woman by the time you get this age your life is over and mm. you know when you're when you're like 
trying to figure things out and you're like i'm 31 years old right like i'm recently out of a very long relationship I heard. you want to feel not i heard Charlamagne you talk to Charlamagne. jesus christ Charlamagne told me lord you know but I, I feel don't like, worry there's life after go ahead sis. i know and, and, I, and that, but, no, but that's my point is like mm. i for me i made a, a very conscious decision with a lot of things in my life going to college being in the relationship that I was yeah. in, not being in that relationship, even with my like recent, you know, back and forth to East Coast, West Coast, like I've always had to be very conscious and cognizant of the fact that like, you know, as a woman, as a black woman, right, especially working in the space that I work in, I might not get that that other chance. Like I got to do it right the first time. And I think You're talking about professionally, I, pro professionally and personally. OK. And only because that's and what are your personal goals? Just so we're clear, do you, you want marriage? My personal children? goals. I want marriage. And that I want nuclear children. Yes. Family found. So she was in a long-term relationship, and I really don't know what caused them, her and her her former man, to split. But I'm gonna guess that she probably put her career first. The same thing that Ebony K. Williams did. She, Ebony K. Williams put her career first, and now. You have this 31 year old who was in a long term relationship and now her and that man are not together. I don't know why, but I'm only going to guess that she put her career first. So let's continue. Foundation. Mm -hmm. I okay, want right. all of that. Right. Um, I don't even have a number of kids. Once we start, we start. I just want oh, to no, twins first. we're not going to get into the minutia of that. But, but yeah, you, but you yes, be a I want, I, yes, I would. I'm, okay. I'm going to be a, an amazing mom. But I just feel like when you lead with the stuff that you lead with, it instantly turns the conversation negative. And for someone like me who is watching and learning and listening to you, mm -hmm. it makes it where now I am defensive. I don't want to watch, listen, and learn. I don't hear the rest of what you're saying. So now I'm not being taught. And I should feel like I can listen to you and learn from you and not feel like you're the op, right? And that's how it starts off when you instantly are telling me everything negative about what I already am facing every single day. And I think- Okay, so see, the problem is that you didn't even listen. So you heard and you heard a little bit and it already triggered you. So you probably didn't even hear the whole scope of what she said, but because of a couple of sentences that she said that you didn't like, you were already turned off, which is what happens with a lot with most women when you speak to them, when you're telling them the truth, because they want to live in their truth, but they don't want to hear the truth. Remember that, brothers, they want to live in their truth. But they don't want to live, but they don't want to hear the truth. But let's continue. That that's a big part of it, too, is like when you put certain truths in front of people, it hurts. People don't want to hear it. But beyond that, like you can't get around the infertility. The second thing was the market value. Right. I don't agree. Like I don't know where you were at 31. But for me, I feel like I'm just now getting to the space where like the people that I'm able to or not even able to, but the people that I'm dating the life experiences that I'm experiencing that are teaching me what I want, what I don't want. I'm right now in the, sp the best space that I've ever been in. And that wasn't me in college. I didn't know what I wanted in college. You're in the best space that you want to be in financially, not in a relationship because you already said you broke up with your man. So you're not in that type of space. You're in that good space financially, but let's continue. I didn't know who I was in college. I seen nothing, haven't done anything. I also, I didn't agree with that. But so, go ahead. We, yeah, let's yeah. let's just because you put two big ones out and let's break them down before we get ahead of ourselves. You know how you know how a lot of women they will talk and talk and talk and sometimes and most of the time they really don't have anything to say. They love to go into story mode. But let's continue. Okay, so you're 31 years old, a college educated woman, uh, enjoying a very successful career in a high profile space. I'm gonna, I'm going to put my hands together for all of that. Now, when I say market value depreciating, Lauren, did you hear what I said before that? Did I, did you hear the specificity of the particular marketplace I'm speaking about? No, which was that? Okay. Bam, she didn't even listen to the whole thing. Bam. So she already gotten her feelings and she didn't even listen to everything that Ebony K. Williams said, which is what most women do. They only want to hear what they want to hear. But let's continue. So I want to just go back actually to your first point, Lauren, which I think you are conceding that you had a reaction to my commentary that was so visceral in nature that you actually shut down your listening comprehension skills. Mm. Yeah. You said that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so because of that, though, right, I'm not going to sit in a posture of ownership because you made a choice to be limited in the way in which you received and processed the information. Now, you are a grown woman. 
and you have autonomy over what you choose to consume and what you choose to not consume. So when I was giving the advice, the strategy, the game, putting you know certain people up on some game, I'm, I'm talking to a very limited pool of young black ladies. The, the ones that are currently in school or immediately following school or graduate school. And then the other caveat, I'll say the other place this information is in real time relevant to are the mothers or even the fathers of those young women. That's who this is for. So you, this is actually not even applicable to you, Lauren. But so when so you, no, no, let me finish. No, right, no, I have to finish because you. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I have to finish my thought. I just want to wait you, before you finish your thought. Okay. I just want to like let's rewind a little bit because mm -hmm. I also think to the reason why people also because not just me or the people because even the people it's meant for I'm sure some of them did the same exact thing as well and too some right? did not right and some did not because I did not right right because but you I, read all the comments right yeah I did and but, what I, really but what I think happens that. is with you and I I did saying this in the most respectful way I think that the way that you approach things like even this conversation right now yeah it can make it it it, it does that it dilutes the whole point of for like where, you for, it, it, here's the thing. She didn't even get out everything that she had to say and already she's triggered. Why is she triggered? Ebony K. Williams didn't even get a chance to finish her whole thought and the other young lady is triggered. So I don't understand. And she and Ebony K. Williams is actually trying to explain to the young lady, but again, she doesn't want to listen, which is what a lot of our women, are. They, they do. They don't want to listen. They just want to feel good. It's just like all they want to do is go to church and feel good. That's what most of these women go for. They doing all the craziness during the week. Then they go to church on Sunday so they can hear the word and feel good. And then walk back out the door and do the, and start all start the process all over again. But let's continue. For you, You're talking Lauren. to me specifically. Yeah, right? I said you agreed with Ebony, though. I agree with certain parts of it. But I think that the my whole point in what I'm saying, right? Because right now I feel like... You're taking what I didn't agree with and the fact that I don't remember specific words or whatever no, I'm you not, said. No, I'm not, Lauren, really. I really think this would be better served and more productive. If just like I, it's kind of like an opening statement in, in a court of law. I gave you a good amount of time to lay out two prongs of disagreement. And I respect and appreciate both of your positions. I'm not saying they are wrong. Look at Envy Messy. Um, I'm not <laughs> saying they're wrong at all. <laughs> but I am Go saying ahead. that I don't know how productive it is to be the time, manner, and delivery police, right? So when we talk about, and also this, the nature of this work that we all do in this space of media and journalism, whatever we want to call it, right? It's very subjective in nature. So for everybody, Lauren, that takes your position, which is very valid, it was visceral to me, I found it triggering, it felt hurtful, it, I felt attacked, I felt policed, I felt shitted on, whatever it is, there's also a whole nother contingency of black women that felt seen by that commentary, that felt heard. I had sores coming up to me. We had a fundraiser, uh, shout out to the Pi Kappa Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, ski we. Uh, we had a fundraiser that very night that that commentary <coughs> dropped. And I had sores coming up to me who are more in my age group, right? Cause that's the, that's the first thing we need to acknowledge. Yeah. Lauren and I are not the same age. Mm -hmm. There's a good 10 years between me and this lovely young lady. Mm -hmm. So I am speaking from a purview of experience that looks a bit different, not vastly so, but a bit different. I agree. And my peers who are 40 and up are like, I wish someone would have told me. And the fact that you are doing the labor, Ebony, you are doing the service of letting young girls that are currently in position to put themselves <clears throat> in best practices because they are currently in school or graduate school or shortly thereafter, matters and, and, it's, and it's good that somebody is rolling up their sleeves and doing the work and having the conversation publicly that quiet as kept many pockets of black elite culture are having with their children generationally every day many of my peers Lauren, when i went to unc chapel hill who were black just like me and you right mm -hmm. they were taught going into the front end of freshman year keep your eyes open you know, get those grades, get that degree. I expect you to go to medical school or law school or PhD. And also, if you want the traditional model, and that's a big if, this is gonna be the best time to be surrounded by the highest concentration of black men that are also pursuing the educational and fiscal model that you are and you desire. And well, it's See, and the thing, and here's the thing, brothers. 
you have a lot of white women because there was a video that showed i mean it, i don't know what school it was but they was graduate the white women were graduating and actually showing rings that they were engaged you i uh, you'll never see a you'll never see a video like that with black women you might see a couple of them that might have a ring but it ain't gonna it's gonna be a very 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 low percentage because they are taught to focus on career focus on themselves have fun live life experience whatever that means so by the time they get these degrees and some of them don't even get a degree some of them start late in school and they don't even get a degree until they're about 35 40 and now they want to go find a husband but a lot of older men again are looking for younger women they're not looking for women that are in their 40s hey she look good she might just be a good sex toy but that's pretty much it because she's not giving out she 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 and she's going to speak on that too but let's go ahead and continue it's really no more or less than that mm. i don't i don't disagree well, well, hold, with that hold, hold on one second part. guys hold, hold on one second ladies uh, we got to uh, take a break. So we'll come back and we also want to take some calls. 800-585-1051. And if you're just joining us, that's Lauren LaRosa. She's our special guest host today. And Ebony K. Williams is up here. And I think it's uh, very important when we come back. Let's talk about what we agree with. About the last time you had a conversation with a man about what he values in women. Because I want to be very clear, Lauren, because you make a really good point that I think was misconstrued by a few. I am in no way saying that the market value on life of black women is depreciating as we age as we get more <clears throat> educated as we get more fiscally fit as we buy properties as we build in our careers our market value in life lauren is ascending beyond the greatest heights of of god but i'm talking about the dating market i'm talking about how men are perceiving us in terms of marketplace value for their partnership desires so let's have that conversation if you don't mind what do you think most hetero we're just gonna kind of focus on black men and black women for the sake of this conversation for this moment mm -hmm. what do you think most hetero educated black men are looking for in a woman partner come on lauren kevin samuels prepared you for this stop right. um, <laughs> let the day rest in peace charlamagne you're right i think age does come into it i think that they're looking younger mm -hmm. i think that they want someone who is like very supportive across all like across mm -hmm. the board like my man is my king type sure. of thing how about availability availability is also a thing as well too mm -hmm. um i also think that especially when you start talking about like men who are like planning for like family and things mm -hmm. of that nature sure they definitely want somebody that is going to be when you talk about availability be able to really tend to family to yes keep, like all of that stuff like yes. i think that that is very important i don't necessarily think that the men that i've had conversations with recently are upfront and honest about that they're lying I'm yeah so sorry, they're I'm not so upfront and honest already about on the that. same page you're not at all but the, let's just make a pause on that though just for the sake brothers have you i know you've heard women all, all all it seemed like every woman i'm not gonna say every the majority of these women that speak they they speak just like how that young lady spoke the oh the majority of men that i ran into don't want the same don't want that i don't understand why they why they say that i don't understand Believe me, you could probably find a drug dealer that's going to probably say that he wants to support his woman. He wants to be there to provide and protect. And that's just the basic of what a man does. See, the thing is, brothers, these women, they want a traditional man. But they want they don't want to be traditional. But they want you to fall in line with them. That's what they want. You need to fall in, fall in line with what they want. Because they're asking you to be traditional. They're asking you to to um to protect. They're asking you to provide. But yet you gotta fall in line with whatever they want or whatever they wanna do. They don't they don't want you to be they don't they don't need to be available because they got their career going on. Their career is way more important than you. You might want a child in the next two years. She, nah, you can't have a child. I don't want to give you a child because I'm not finished with what I have to do. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. So, and that's when a brother would probably just move on and find somebody else that does want a child. So, hey, brothers, make, make, a, make your decision, brothers. Set your standards because this is what, this is the things that these, a lot of these women are talking about. But let's continue. 
think of not we understand that but let's kind of expand that so what lauren is saying and it's very important is that oftentimes m men like to be the good guy right can we just acknowledge that men for despite their behaviors and choices and the way they oftentimes show up in the world you know it's like a man will keep a girlfriend have 15 million side chicks because why he don't want to be the bad guy and break up with his girlfriend that's the kind of stuff men tend to do right and i can spoiler alert it does not get better as they age anyway um <laughs> now you see you see how she you see how she down in men that's what a lot of our women do they will tear down a man especially the black and she's speaking on black men 15 side chicks maybe that's something that she went through i don't know but i mean you it's, it's just so easy to tear down the man but then when a man does it it's a problem but let's continue <laughs> so i believe that men mean well when they say they're looking for their michelle obama when they say they're looking for the beyonce to their jay-z but they're lying would you oftentimes. agree they can't they can't handle that ego wise as well I'm not going to go in that direction. What does that even mean that we can't? See, that's, 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 you know what that means, brother? That's basically what she's saying is that we're intimidated. What are, what man is intimidated of from a, of a woman? Ain't no man intimidated of any woman out there, brothers. I don't care how many degrees she got. I don't care how much money she got. Brothers, no man is intimidated by neither of those stuff. And most Matter of fact, I think the only thing that a man might be intimidated by is probably when they in debt and they got to go help. They might have to help them pay for their bills. That's pretty much it. But let's continue. Then what I am going to say is what they prioritize are the things you just laid out. They want a woman who is accommodating to them. They want a woman who, especially more successful men, they mm -hmm. want a woman that when they say, hey, yo, I'm going to um, the south of France for two weeks. Uh, pack your bag, let's go. Let me tell you what they don't want to hear, Lauren. Oh, I got to go to shoot, sh to L.A. to shoot Judge Ebony for three days. Oh, I got to go be at a uh, conference uh, in Florida for black women attorneys uh, gathering. Oh, I got to go to personal, sorority Ebony. thing. Mm -hmm. It sounds like based on a true story. It's yeah. all based on a true story. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> Charlamagne, shut up. Let these women talk, please. Right. Yeah, no, 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 but I'm glad he said that because when you when you said that, I'm like, damn. So she, she this has is my a, lived experience. Yeah, you, yeah. Got, you got some some background, like personally. I, that. Yeah, there's a vulnerability in this conversation that I really want people to feel right now because because and then you're yeah just pointing out the delivery yeah. point that i was trying to make yeah. earlier in your delivery and i know content right and i understand what you do you're really good at what you do content wise you it always I, I, causes these I, things i don't right? look like it i know Period. it's great um but i think <laughs> <These> jokes <laughs> i think for me like uh, when i say that i disagree with those things that we talked about mm -hmm. what i wanted to make clear earlier was and i think we kind of got to this me disagreeing doesn't mean that what you're saying to me is just like oh this is bs oh this right. isn't true like because what i just said it goes to a lot of the points that you made right i think that the disagreement again comes in with how you say it and we don't get that vulnerability right so me ma'am you didn't you earlier in the, in your earlier you said you didn't even listen to everything that she said and she even asked you if you would even listen to what she said you said no because you was in your feelings you were triggered so you didn't listen to anything she said. You heard a couple of sentences and you was upset, just like a lot of our women. But let's continue. Sitting here with you right now mm -hmm. is like, this is what I want to feel when I see the content. I might not always get that sure. though. And maybe it's not, like you said, it wasn't for me. It was for the girls that's still in college, right? Correct. But at the same time, it's placed on my timeline. So I get it and I feel it and sure. I stop and I listen either way. But and I'm glad you do. Shout out to the team at the Griot. Go ahead. But you agree first, with those the, but I was going, going to get to that. But what I did agree with was the fact, like when you started talking about the pool of men getting smaller when yes. it comes to those men who men who will be honest about what they want when it comes to the family, Absolutely. a woman, mm -hmm. they are actually worth the time, the energy. It's it's consistent. You're getting the same energy that you're putting out. It does get smaller as you get older. And like now that I'm out here in the dating world, I'm like, oh, OK. And keep in mind, you're only 30. So right, thirty one. So and it's like as you get to forty, that the 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 pool the pool has shrunk further. Fifty, even more so. Mm -hmm. And I've dated. Girl, up I'm, gonna to late 50s. I'm gonna have a man before I'm fifty. I'm gonna have a man before I'm fifty. And listen, I'm not even. I got. I got. <laughs> I'm up before no, no, they no. I actually believe in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So I believe. So you speak. So you you have, and you will desire. I do want to speak to the fertility part because it's very important. It is. Um, as I sit here with y'all today, uh. You know, I want y'all to listen to what she had. Let me back it up just a little bit, brothers. But I want y'all to listen to what she has to say about the fertility, because there are people that I have heard ladies talking about freezing eggs. 
but she's going to tell you about fertility and how much it costs. And pr I promise you, a lot of y'all ain't sitting on this type of money. But let's go. Speak so you you have and you will desire. I do want to speak to the fertility part because it's very important. It is. Um, as I sit here with y'all today, uh, you know, I'm literally on some fertility drugs. I am preparing for my embryo transfer in the next few weeks. Now, I'm 40 years old, just turned 40 a couple of weeks ago. Y'all know I've been very transparent about my motherhood journey. I'm doing mm -hmm. it solo by choice. Y'all know I froze eggs at 34 years old. I'm mm -hmm. doing this. I'm excited to be a mom. Uh, I'm scared as hell. I know it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And yet I cannot wait to enter this 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 mother era mm -hmm. of my life. Brothers, y'all hear this? She doesn't even want to even raise a child with a man. She wants to do this alone. She wants to do this alone, brothers. That's all she wants. Brothers, and, and again, we're going to get to the, the, the freezing of the eggs part when it comes to finances. But a lot of our women think like this. They don't want a man to be there to raise a child. Brothers, that is imbalance. It is imbalanced when it's just one parent raising the child, especially if the, if it's the woman. Because I'm going to keep it 100 with you. and I don't care who gets upset with me. A woman doesn't really have much to teach a child after that child turns five or six. She ain't got nothing to teach them. So let's go ahead and continue. And also, Lauren, I don't think this is how most black women want to do it. Why? I was going to say, why solo by choice? Uh, well, several reasons. Number one, I'm no longer willing to wait to activate my pursuit of motherhood. I'm no longer willing to wait. I've been married and divorced in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. I had also a long-term relationship many years ago. I ended a engagement during the pandemic. I'm ready for my baby. Right. I am ready to build my legacy in this way. I am ready to pour into someone other than me, finally. It Brothers, you're not... Man, let me tell you something, brother. Ain't no woman building no legacy by herself with just with a child. That's not a legacy. I don't even know what the heck she's talking about talking about building a legacy. But let's go ahead and continue. It took me a very long time to get here, but when, when, when she I'm ready, ready right now, she too. ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that most w women, most black women, desire doing this journey alone. That's I don't. Important. It's very important. very important. Yeah. And, I, and I know that you mentioned yesterday the egg freezing. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Because I think that that is marketed. Not just you, Lauren. I think in general. that I want y'all to pay attention, brothers. How much. The, pay attention to how much it's going to cost for an egg freeze. Even though, I mean, I, I, you know, this is what this is what a lot of women want. There's a, there's a lot of women that want to do this. So let's go ahead and just continue. That is in a lot of these comments, right? Well, girl, just freeze your eggs and don't worry about the rest. Nah, that's some bullshit. Because I'm here to tell you because I'm living it, right? I froze eggs at 34. I never thought in a million years I would need to use them, right? Mm -hmm. Because why? I was in a loving, committed relationship. Th these were my spare. Mm -hmm. Have you frozen eggs at this point, dude? No, I thought about doing it last year. I thought about starting the process. Okay, so let me just, and this is not investigative. This is, I'm just trying to see something here. Do you know how many eggs, on average, a woman should have on ice, on reserve, frozen, for a probability of one live birth. No, I don't. About 20. Then if I say, okay, how many egg retrievals are required to get about 20 eggs in a woman that's say 35 and up? The answer is at least two. What's the cost average of an egg retrieval? Amy probably knows this, but he knows it's between 12 and $15,000 mm. per retrieval cycle. That most average. insurances don't cover. Most insurances do not cover unless you work. I hope y'all heard that. And I mean, I and I know there's probably some ladies listening. Fifteen thousand, ten to fifteen thousand dollars, and for one egg, and that's just freezing it. We, she still has some more. There's some still some other costs that you have to pay for. And she said you have to at least use twenty, twenty eggs. So, most of our black women ain't even got that type of money. So they ain't freezing no eggs. So they going the old fashioned way. They gonna get that pole. Fifteen to twenty thousand. Then that's just one egg, and you have to do twenty. But let's continue. Working at Google or Amazon, and by the way, you probably need to be married for them to cover it. Otherwise, they consider it elective. 
-hmm. They don't recognize it as infertility in mm -hmm. the way that married couples that struggle to conceive have. So what I'm saying is the egg freezing route, the single motherhood by choice route, the IVF route are amazing technological tools, Lauren, but they are wealthy women tools, mm. period. Let's be very clear. That is a rich woman option. If you are, and, me, and I, nobody- Let me say this real quick too, brothers. Now, and even if she does that, you still got to find somebody. You still got to get some sperm. So, what? who is she going to pick? Now, she's probably going to go to a sperm bank. And she's going to want to get a, more than likely, a black, black man sperm. Let me tell you something. And y'all can look this up yourself. The fertility bank has a very low count on black men. Black men ain't even giving up their sperm like that. So I just want you brothers to keep that in mind. Black men are not even giving up their sperm. And, they, and, and, and a lot of our men are getting smarter because guess what she could do? She could probably try to put that man on child support if she find out who that man is. So black men are getting a little bit smarter. Over 50% of our black men in America are single with no children. They don't want to go through that court process. They don't want to go through the headache with a lot of our women because they are headaches. And all you brothers out there that are giving, you know, giving out your sperm to multiple women, hey, I hope y'all ready for that shit. I hope y'all prepared because if you ain't got the money, you're going to have a real damn headache. Just keep it at 100. But let's continue is more important to me in our society than our educators, right? So let's say I'm talking to my soul who's a teacher in Memphis, Tennessee, who's probably on average making sixty-five dollars to $75,000 a year doing most, some of the most incredible work of our community. Where's that sister getting $30,000 for two retrievals or even $15,000 for one? And that's before I've done a transfer. That's before I've had a failed transfer and having to do another one, which Envy has experienced, uh, you know, and thank God they had a healthy uh, baby subsequent that. Y'all heard that. It's not, what if the transfer fails? Now you gotta start the process all over again. So now you're $15,000, 10 to $15,000 is gone. So again, brothers, I'm just, I, I'm just putting this out there because there are women that are actually thinking about freezing their eggs. And I'm glad that she's putting this out there because that 31 year old that she was speaking to was thinking about doing it, but I guarantee she didn't know the price. So you gotta you you're gonna be spending a lot of money and she talking about doing a legacy. I don't even understand that. But let's continue. Naturally. Right. But you see what I'm saying? It's just more to it than just freezing it. I get you. I think with that part for me, I was speaking from my own personal experience. And I think that like hearing you respond to it, mm -hmm. I can understand your response to what I said. But I think maybe I should have been a, a little bit more clear because yeah. for me at that still freeze them though by yeah, the way because you have that, money at that time when I was thinking about doing it it was because the insurance that I was getting through my employer supported that to a certain extent where right. anything like yes it is expensive but I would have been able to figure it out so it I was think a, you should still do it I, I want that to I don't want that missed here I'm still got, encouraging will, you to do it I will say I got a little bit I got like scared out of it a little bit only because Fears of, out of God don't do that. But but more so because of what like Envy shared with me, what you talked about, like going through all of that, and then it I'll go with you to not work, right? I'll go with you. We can talk about. I'm it. very serious. Okay. I really so so I'm saying two things here, and this is important. In this conversation, y'all, people have got. I encourage people. I'll say to hold space for more than one thing at one time. Yeah, that's I true. am saying, and that was my yeah. that was my reasoning, right? Because. Okay. Well, for, first, let me get back to one thing. So then you talked about the people with the resources who are able or, or not able to do it because of financial reasons, right? Right. And when I heard you say the women in college, because another issue that, that, that I agreed with, but people, some people were like, uh, about was... <laughs> Because I think what were two, they like, Lauren? The, uh, right. The headlines didn't help, right? Because <laughs> you're, you're, what the headlines are saying is like, Ebony K. Williams is saying, while you're in college, you also should be trying to get a ring to her. Like people, if you there's a big if, if which you acknowledge, I pointed that out yes. because that 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 matters, that right? Is a, if that is one of your primary goals, if you choose that, but this right. is, but I think when you said that with the women in college, I thought about me and my friends in college, right? While we're in college, we don't have the money to do that, but when we graduated, 
we all became very successful in our careers, mm -hmm. financially doing well. We had that resource because we were black women who took the time to get our education and then apply it to what we wanted in life. So I instantly put those women in that category. So I didn't even think about the people who weren't financially able because right. I thought that the people that you were speaking to, back to your point of who right. you were talking to, were women that one day would be able to do it. And I, the reason why I was like, that that's not what I wanted to hear was because mm -hmm. I felt like how I've been spoken to is like people will tell you not to do things right because they will say okay well it's going to be financially hard or where will you get the resources and it's like why can't I afford to do it like yeah but you understand clearly if you I'm not sure for how familiar you are with my content Lauren but the folks here in this room that are everything I talk about is about prosperity and living a first-class American wealthy existence for black folks period. I, I know that you do that but what what I when I hear that and I and I know how people will take it in in the some conversation people. will run some people will take it in the yeah. conversation will run they may not know that and they may not present it that way so now to me I said I feel like I put a dark cloud because now you're like okay these women are in college and then most of the, the I know I'm a black woman so when I'm hearing that I'm instantly like okay people are going to use this to be like the black women who graduate with the degrees they mm -hmm. don't have those options because of A, B, C, and D number one being finances no, it's right? the opposite, and that's not a right? conversation that I don't want no 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 so, so I think that's so interesting like that, that that's the way you heard it <clears throat> I believe that's the way you heard it but I think that there are also people that hear it the complete opposite way Lauren and we have to make the space for that I hear you saying you heard my commentary in general and you, you heard a woman advocating for a glass being half full they're excuse me half empty rather and then there are those that heard what i was saying it was like shit that's some great perspective i wish someone would have told me when i was positioned to do something about it mm -hmm. i am certainly going to advance this piece of uh advice and commentary to my children or the kids in my church or the kids in my you know jack and jill chapters or whatever in the world and making sure that they have this piece of knowledge or, or or optionality that I never had because no one ever told me and they're seeing it as the glass half full and I love that so brothers the thing is because of all the I don't even want to even call it failures but because she didn't see Ebony K. Williams when it came to relationship and love I will say that she failed she didn't succeed again she was married and she divorced her man because she said why she divorced her man because she wanted to because she wanted to go through she wanted to advance in her career she didn't want to be she didn't want to be a wife which a lot of our women they don't want to be wives brothers they want the title of wife but they don't want to be or they don't want the responsibilities of being a wife then during covid she ended a four-year relationship all because the man wanted to be with her with his kids he he spent he spent a, and she said that yes i understand that his kids are number one but she also said that i should be your number one so a lot of our women are selfish brothers i don't make these things up and you can hear it she ebony k williams said it so now she's struggling She's at 40. Yes, yeah, she made some, she she worth a lot of money, brothers, but she wants she really wants love. And now she's going to now she's over here freezing her eggs so she could have a child, which is kind of sad. But let's go ahead and continue. That for them. But do yeah. you feel like the blogs and a lot of people that reported on it picked it up that way? I, I think the LA Times did. No, and but I, and I feel like what Ebony just said now is very important. All Ebony is saying is this isn't ideal. And you don't that, want it's folks, not, it's you, not. you don't want folks to have to necessarily go through this. For me, right. I, I mean, don't want to eat. Let me just reiterate that because that's very important. Because this is this is these these stakes are very high, Lauren. I'm fifty thousand dollars into a uh, IVF journey by myself, so I don't have a husband splitting that with me. Which I which there's reasons why that's preferable for me. Mm -hmm. But I really need people to hear that, and I'm taking shots and I'm giving them to myself, and I'm doing all this to bring life into this world. Yeah. And and I don't take it lightly because it's a very serious thing. So I think when we were very cavalier, not not just you, right, but in general with oh just IVF or oh just marry outside the race. That, obviously been there done that too oh, that, that, that. that oh, well i heard some snow i, I, I hope y'all heard that she married a man her first marriage well she only she's only been married once her first her her husband was white her husband was caucasian and it didn't mm -hmm. even work out with her i wonder why it didn't work so brothers 
even uh, a lot of even the white man doesn't even want to even deal i mean the, the white man doesn't really want to deal with our black women because they are a lot of them are just aggressive and they and they're very selfish and it's just the truth i know people hate the things that i say but the truth hurts and a lot of times and i play these videos because i just want y'all to see the, the things that these women are saying i'm not i don't even have to say any of this stuff this is Ebony K. Williams talking to another black woman, and she and she doesn't even like it. And I and I and I, another thing, they don't listen. They they half listen to certain things, and as soon as they hear one word, they're triggered. They hear a sentence, they're triggered. They ain't listening to nothing else you got to say. You you more than likely you're making you're making facts. You're talking facts. You're putting out good points, but they don't want to hear none of that because. They in their feelings. Oh no! King commentary. I said that was cute. Now I can't eat some Well, hold up, hold up, hold up, guys, hold up, guys. We gotta take some calls. Yeah, we gotta take some calls. Oh my god! We gotta take some calls. Eight hundred. We're doing this up because five eight five. Get this. One zero five one. You watch. If you listen. Okay, let's go. We gotta take some calls when we come back. I just want to say this. I just want to say this. Most people don't know what what Ebony's going through right now with the with the in vitro and the fertility. No, because no, because most people haven't been through it. And the fact that holding court podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Charlemagne. But, <laughs> but the people that listen to hold the court, they get no, this every day. Bites when they but the, the fact that room. she has to do it by herself is, right. is, is, is a lot. Like she has to put them shots in her that stomach and, and and all that by herself. Thank you. Ed. I hope y'all heard. She don't even have a man to do that to even help her. So listen, brothers. The woman was not built to be to be tasked with so much stuff. But hey, they want to they want to have they want to be they want to feel equal or they want to be equal. Hey, let them be, brothers. Let them be. Let them be equal. And, and most people don't know it. Like I can't even imagine if my wife had to do it by herself, yeah. or a woman having to do it by herself and go to those doctors' appointments. So it's a lot. Be in that waiting room by yourself. Yeah. It's a lot. I, I can't imagine that. We'll and come the transfer. We'll take some calls. We'll talk yeah. some, we'll take some calls we'll when we come back. We gotta talk about the stuff that we agreed with too, because a lot of people agree with some well, things. Well, the call is probably okay. get to some of it. But, but we ain't got all that much time, guys. Okay. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Let's go. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning, Club. Our special guest host Lauren Larosa is here, and Ebony K. Williams is still here. We're having a, a, a grown-up discussion this morning, and we're opening up the phone lines. We're going to let uh, you guys out there get a chance to chop it up with Ebony K. Williams. Now, brothers, watch this, because I'm not going to go through this. I'm not going to go through all these calls, but I want you to see how they feel about you black men. Let's go. All right. 800-585-1051. And uh, we just want to say it's a respectful conversation. So as soon as the disrespect happens, we, we're banging on That's you. That's right. So no bus right okay, bus driver. Okay, bus driver gate, gate has happened. We're on to um, something else now. You stop it, Charlemagne. Hello, who's this? Good morning, Chris. Hey, Chris. This is I don't even think we should be talking to guys. I don't want to hear from any men. Yeah, I don't think this we should be talking to men. no men about this. This is not a, men, a conversation for men to co-op uh, and celebrate their mediocrity. I agree. You, you hear that? They don't want to hear from you guys. They don't want to hear the truth, brothers. They don't want to hear the truth. But I'm going to stop there because I really don't feel like listening to the rest of it. And if y'all want to, y'all can probably check it out yourself. Check out the whole interview. But, I mean, uh, I'll just say this because uh, I had already listened to the whole thing. A lot of the, the female callers actually, uh, I think it was about four or five of them, they, they pretty much agree with what um, Ebony K. Williams had said in her podcast. But, um... On that note, brothers, I really don't have anything else. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep bringing y'all this content. You know what I'm saying? You keep telling them people that I'm doing this. I'm going to always bring it up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But um, Tuesdays and Thursdays night, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for y'all to gift me. You know what I'm saying? If y'all want to listen, y'all can listen in. I'm always going to have a video for y'all. So that way y'all can see so for the background so on what I'm talking about because you know, I don't want to just be talking just to talk. I always got to have a video in the background so y'all can see the truth. And uh, and for you brothers, I'm only I'm only here to bring y'all wisdom, knowledge, and advice. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, but on that note, brother, that's pretty much it. Y'all keep it 100. Peace.